باشم Hi, I'm Heather Barton. And I'm Richie Antipuna. And this is the Richie Antipuna Show. It was reported on Philly.com and everywhere else in the neighborhood that a Philadelphia jury found a Kensington man, John James, not guilty of aggravated assault. Good job, Jay. A possession of an instrument of crime and simple assault. He was accused of using a motorcycle to try to run over a police officer. However, the jury did find him guilty of recklessly endangering another person and fleeing an officer. Although James was the one on trial, his defense attorneys tried to put Sergeant Richard D. Coatsworth's credibility on the line during the trial. A forensic pathologist and three eyewitnesses testified that he shot James in the leg from behind while he rode a motorcycle. The Coatsworth testified that he shot in self-defense from the side as James, then 18, aimed his speeding bike directly at him. Police had been chasing the owner of the bike who got off and allowed James to get on minutes later. That's because he can ride a bike That's fast. mean. He like, can ride a bike I'm fast. being chased by the cops. Here, you can ride it. He's a, he, he's a fast rider. You can, good. You can ride my he's bike good now. And, and we're going to show footage of him. Good idea. Maybe I'll run from the cops in my car and then let you borrow Minutes it. later, the coach rip shot him and fired a second bullet into the gas tank. At the time of the incident, the coach ref was being investigated for shooting someone else in 09, but was cleared. Some praise him as a hero for surviving a shotgun blast to the mouth as a rookie, but others disagree. The sergeant has had nine citizen complaints accusing assault, abuse, and misconduct. One, according to sources, he became enraged at an employee at a dry cleaners and shoved a 63-year-old man to the floor, causing him to hit his head. Last year, his actions cost the city money. A Columbia University education professor and now a Daily News columnist received an out-of-court settlement after he filed a federal lawsuit accusing the Coatsworth of violating his Fourth Amendment rights by illegally searching him and his car. John Digman, 48, is a convicted bandit who was released from federal custody this month after serving six years for robbing banks. He was set free on July 2nd. Digman wasted no time returning to his old ways, said the FBI. According to the Bureau, Digman held up four banks and tried to rob two in July. On July 11th, the man attempted to rob the Bank of America branch at 1841 East Allegheny Ave in Kensington, but the heist was foiled. Then there was a holdup at the Beneficial branch on the 800 block of East Allegheny, where $1,000 was taken, the FBI said. Oh, like times are hard. Really? Banks only have like $1,000. That's all they're allowed to give out. That's called the sucker bank. Oh. You just give them a thousand. Okay. On July 26th, the bank at Aramingo in Cumberland was robbed at 1222 in the afternoon, and the person robbed the bank with no weapon, and there was no description or any further information was given, but they are still considering him a suspect in that robbery because there was a threatening demand note and a similar physical description. So. Hmm. He's got some money. On July 14th, the fire department responded to a call at the Conrail tracks that crossed Kensington Avenue just north of Lehigh Ave at 9.22 a.m. about a man on the tracks, officials said. He was apparently hit by a freight train. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The circumstances surrounding the incident are under investigation and no identity was given. Hmm. wonder who it was. The annual citywide national... National. Yeah, I'm glad you can't read your own shit. That's what's no, up. It, it, something's wrong. Maybe it was Ain't too big. Wrong. City you night. You fucked up. You fucked up. No, Admit it. I didn't. Who's no, always, I didn't. Who's always right? Oh, please. <laughs> Look at the kid. Like, he got a haircut. I know. What did you do to our cat? Oh, my God, baby. You look like a little... Of course, he got a haircut. <laughs> 
The annual citywide national night out celebration was canceled this year due to lack of funding, of course. But several neighborhood-based events were still held in Northeast Philly on Tuesday, August 2nd. National Night Out is intended to promote crime prevention, community spirit, and police community partnership. Thousands of cities and towns across the United States conduct public gatherings on the designated date. Meanwhile, residents who did not attend an organized activity were encouraged to turn their porch lights on during the night to show their support against crime. In Philly, in recent years, public funding for Operation Town Watch has dwindled, forcing the city's Town Watch organizers to scale back the program in previous years. Operation hey, Town Wash held a block party style event on National Night Out at the Walmart at 1601 Columbus Boulevard. That event did not occur this year either. However, the 8th Police District Advisory Council and Fox Chase Town Watch and the Castor Gardens Town Watch did host public activities. Hmm. So, See, communities do care. Cut though, and everything. Well, of course. 20 yeah. year old Khalil Oliver was shot last week in Kensington at Emerald Street near Fletcher and died as a result, police said. Oliver had an argument with an unknown man who shot Oliver behind the left ear and once in the back. He was taken to Temple University Hospital in critical condition and was pronounced dead at 5.05 p.m. Police were interviewing witnesses in the case. Hmm. A lot of shootings this summer. It's always in the summer. Well, speaking of summer, this summer season has been proven to be the deadliest hot weather season in Philly since 08 when the heat was blamed for 26 deaths. As of last week, it was reported that there have been 25 heat-related deaths. And that sucks because this is a totally preventable thing. Like, you don't have to die from heat exhaustion. Right, you just get naked, take off all your clothes and cool off. That's, I guess, an option. The majority of the victims had heart problems, but anyone could be at risk, even healthy people. The summer of 2011 could become the deadliest since 2002 when 40 fatalities were blamed on the heat. That's pretty high. Hmm. Heat death occurs fairly quickly when the core body temperature raises too high. If you feel nauseous, dizzy, faint, get in cool air, pour cold water on yourself, try to stay cool and check on your elderly neighbors and for God's sake, take your fucking animals in. I'm sick of hearing them barking outside in the yard. Or get them haircuts. too hot. Or get them haircuts. No, these people leave their animals outside in the, in the freaking heat. It drives me nuts. Make sure you say well again. Well, last week at Lincoln High School, State Senator Mike Stack, a group of lawmakers and civic leaders promised roughly 750 pissed off neighbors that they'd fight a plan of business owners trying to open a methadone clinic on Frankfurt Avenue in Holmesburg. They were very sneaky, the ones that took out the permits, because we couldn't find out one word about the people applying for this methadone clinic said City Councilwoman Joan Krajewski. But that's what they do. They did the same thing with the fucking garbage plant down on Amargo Alley. You know. Life yeah, and they like to do it when like there's vacation time because there's not a lot of people in the meetings. Right. Denise Leifker, a visiting professor at Widener University, said that a common misconception about the drug is that it replaces one addiction with another. Exactly, because I know people who are methadone for fucking 20 something that's years. That's true. Methadone is a treatment program. It doesn't give you a high, she said. People get back to being functional where they can work and maintain a normal lifestyle. That's why they all hang at Broad Street all day long, all day long outside. But local leaders pointed to the crime and poverty stricken Frankfurt and attrib attributed its problems to drugs and drug treatment centers. Local leaders also alleged that Alan Yanovsky and Eric Janovsky Two business owners linked to the Healing Way have no medical background and question the motives behind the clinic. It's big money. What the fuck? Right. Leaders also said that Dennis Cope, who owns the property, told them he was duped and that he is willing to pay more than $100,000 to terminate the five-year lease. His only appeal hearing is scheduled for August 31st. Krajewski, Boyle, and other leaders implored residents Two or ten. Yeah. You got to get out and fucking speak your mind. Yeah, and they did. They did. They get were up, really pissed out. off about that. And I would be too. I wouldn't want a methadone clinic around me. It brings trouble. It's common knowledge. Mm -hmm. And they, they stand out there and sell it. And kids are dying from methadone too. Right. So, I mean, it's just it's just as bad. And it's harder to get off of methadone than it is heroin. I told you, I know my has been on methadone for 20 something years. 
On everyblock.com, a concerned resident issued a warning. Someone is stealing copper rain gutters in Mayfair. Six houses on Fanshawe, Fanshawe, Fanshawe. 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 Shut up. Between Sackett and Hawthorne with original copper rain gutters have had them removed and stolen. A lot of houses on Charles Street don't have copper siding. Now you're giving and them I, up. Now the I thieves was are going to go. I swear to God, I was like, they're going to come down and just strip all you're these You're telling houses. the thieves where to go get more copper. They know where the fuck it's at, believe me. No, they're right in the same the area. Street. What's the address? No. It's the whole block. Yeah. Every house. Um, well, those who have aluminum rain gutters seem to be safe at the moment. So, so the copper's going. Right. Guard your gutters. Guard your gutters. We have a fellow Kenzo with a gripe and needs help. Elizabeth Dixon Schminick. Schmink. Elizabeth Dixon Schmink. Schmink. Says, so we saw a rat. Yes, a freaking rat in our yard yesterday. Called the city and they can't put rat poison out because there are, there are houses surrounding our yard that have weeds and trees like crazy and no one to remove them. Each department with the city says they can't do nothing because of the weeds, and yet they aren't going after the owners to remove the weeds. Worse now that it is rain, they stink ungodly. Any advice, anyone? People did give her such advice as pull out the weeds herself, but the city charges to remove the debris. Call the city, which she says she did, and they were out and gave... The owners a citation, but they still haven't done anything about it. If there is anyone out there that can give advice or help, please let her know. Yeah. I would just do it myself and build a fucking city. Because if that was your yard and Clipper or the city came out and did that, they charge you. So if that's the city's problem, I would fucking do it and build a fucking city. Uh, I'm not so sure that'll work. But a couple of people say, go to your state rep. And, well, you're you know. not going to get paid, but it's just a slap in the face. Just walk right up and say, here's your fucking bill. Yeah, you well, maybe she days. don't have the money to put out. I mean, that sucks. I have to live with rats. To put out what? For what? To put the money out to get it removed. She could do it herself. Like, get, get her family together. Do it yourself. Right, but they're going to have to haul it all away. Where's she putting it? You can't put it in trash cans. It's Why too can't? much. Because it's a lot of weeds. So you put a little bit out every week. It can be done. Why don't you go over and do I it, Mr. It. Commissioner? No. We, don't, we don't talk about that on the show. Oh, whatever. Ask Heather about her asshole warning. Do you have an asshole warning? Mm -hmm. Asshole alert. Asshole alert. <laughs> well, it's, it sort of could be considered a health alert. I would like to address a mistake that I'm sure every one of us have made or will make in the future. Sending a text to the wrong person. I received a text last week from a so-called friend talking shit about me and re referring to me as Miss Kensington. Ms. As you Kensington. remember. <laughs> she went on to say a few not so very nice things about me. Immediately after she sent a text claiming that, you know, it was just a joke. She was joking. She was trying to get my attention. And she knows I have such a great sense of humor mm -hmm. that I would think it was funny. I'm not going to say I exactly it what funny. it said. I, I mean, it's funny I because she did not it mean to good, send it to me. If you're watching, it was a good, I liked it. Yeah. I, I thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> but when I called her right away, she didn't answer. So obviously it was a mistake. I could just imagine the, you know reaction she had when she knew I got that and was like oh my god like I sent it to her instead of whoever I was talking to her about so I just wanted to give everybody a warning because you know you could send it to the wrong person and therefore your health could be at risk I mean right you gotta watch you get your ass before really you hit hurt. send you have to watch look and see who you're sending yeah because you might get your ass kicked so warning if you're going to be a scumbag and talk shit on your friends make sure to check the name of the person you're sending the message to you dumbass and by the way it's the fucking Kenzo Queen, bitch. Don't get it twisted. The Kenzo Queen, bitch. Not Miss Well, Kenzo. I am a bitch. I'll admit that. I ain't denying it. On Wackadoo the World News, a death row prisoner who was executed last month using a new lethal injection drug suffered greatly during the process. He was said to be conscious for approximately the first three minutes of the execution. A leading U.S. anesthesiologist testified. Roy Willard Blankenship was executed on June 23rd using pentobarbital, also known as nembutol. Witnesses say that his eyes were open throughout. There were some reports in the media that Blankenship could have been faking it. 
But the doctor pointed out that one cannot fake eyes wide open at death, which is probably, you know, I think that would be true. <laughs> Earlier this year, the convicted murderer tried to win a stay of execution, claiming the drugs that the state of Georgia were using on him, sodium thiopenyl, were past their sell-by date and would cause him to die in excruciating pain. Which he should. Following the halt of domestic pro production, the drugs have become scarce causing the delay of many executions and many states switching to the pentobarbital. Though concerns have since been raised about its safety, accounts are starting to emerge of apparently botched executions resulting from the use of the new and untested drug. Well, it's only three minutes and they're bitching that they're suffering. Like, who cares? They, they've caused a lot of suffering to other people, so they should suffer a little bit. How do you know? He might have just killed somebody because they keep changing the fucking words. No, it wasn't. Everything. And I'm not going to get into the whole story about what he did, but it was it was not. No, he no. deserved it, and he should have been suffering for like three years. What not happened three in Jackson, minutes. Mississippi? In Jackson, Mississippi, police say a woman opened fire on a puppy that had threatened children, but wound up shooting and killing her husband. Mm. Witnesses tell police that the pit bull came or the pit bull named Cocaine, had lunged at some children and tried to attack them. Cocaine attacks. Cocaine attacks. The dead man's son says the children were taken inside and his father picked the dog up. It was then that police say Beth or Betty Walker fired twice, hitting the dog once and her husband in the chest. She found that. That was an opportunity. Uh, yeah, like I never even thought of that. She's that a smart woman. A yeah. Fire. Get the dog. Get the dog! And he listens to her, and she's like, boom! Like, how smart is she? That's and she got away with it because they said... Uh, well, they have to learn to live, love, and live. It appears to be accidental. The grand jury, grand, a grand jury. jury will decide whether, you know, to charge her. But she's going to... Come on. She, he was probably an asshole anyway. Animal control officers have taken the dog and its owner could face charges. That's why you shouldn't name your pets after fucking illegal drugs. Yeah. So she killed her husband, not the dog. Yeah, the dog lived. I'm so glad the, the dog, dog lived. Love that. In the love hate comments in the city paper, someone wrote, Pit cunt to the stupid little pinkish blonde hair cunt and her asshole friends at the A place and the Maytals. Except the wheelchair dude who seemed cool. Reggae concerts are peace and love and good vibes, not the place to mosh. If you and your asshole friends want to mosh, go somewhere else instead of pissing off all the people around you. It was a packed house and no room for moshing. You and your asshole friends were the only ones wanting to do it. P.S. Tell your fat friend in the black to wash once in a while. She smelled like a dead fish. <laughs> well, this one wrote, you're a bitch like no other. Once a month around your period, I get to hear you rant and rave about all things I don't do for you because you can't accept that your period is coming on. Are you that emotionally disconnected from your menstrual and brain? All you have to do is say, why am I such a bitch? Clearly, you're a bitch. I listen to you say some of the most obnoxious things and expect me to jump to your request. Bitch, please. I Richie am a total asshole. Who the fuck do you think I am? Just be glad I don't knock you the fuck out. Once your period comes on, you return to the sweet and passionate woman I care about. I stopped loving your bitch ass years ago because of these periods. But our sex is crazy good. That's why I endure those four days before it comes on. We well, ought to fuck her while she has her period. Why are you in denial? Take something to curb your premenstrual emotion. It's ridiculous. Why do guys complain? They don't under you just don't understand if you've got your period. No, it's not. It's it's Beat chemical. That pussy it's all up. chemical. Beat that pussy He's up. not talking about that. He's Doesn't just saying like she's a miserable bitch prior. She's miserable because she ain't beating it up while she got her period. No, ah, that's you don't even. You're. Beat oh that my pussy god. Up. Believe me. See, that's why we have no communication, men and women, because you don't interpret anything we say the way it's supposed to be meant. We're trying to convey it in one way, and you take it a totally different well, way. I want people that's to not be honest. what you meant. I want people to be honest and comment if they would like to get, you know, I want women to comment if they would like to be fucked while they have their period. 
What does that have comment. to do? That's not what, what, the, what that make That's you not happier? what his story was about. Does that make you happier during your menstruation? Period? No, most men don't care about that. They don't care about that. I don't know. I'm just saying. That's, I think that's, that's not what it was about, though. It was basically him saying that she's a bitch four days prior to her getting her beer because of PMS. Mm -hmm. no. Women go through PMS. Oh my God! You're so you're you're just, just comment if you if you like to get dumb. your thing beat up while you have your uh, PMS. My mom's gonna be so mad at you, dear fuckface. You're the worst possible human to have ever been created. You pretend to be tough when you're really just a simple boy or who has a lot of growing up to do. Fuck you for giving those disgusting ass girls your time. You would have had something good with me. Sorry, I don't wear ten pounds of makeup. And not Bing. to pay all your bills. Message. The most I could give you is my love. Don't contact me. It's a waste. Shack up with a girl that you're used to. It's pathetic. You're pathetic. You're nothing but scum that lurks around the corner, waiting to trick timid, stupid girls into things for you. Consider this my going away letter, a statement that demands you leave me alone once and for all. I hope this gets the point across. This person wrote, we are not friends. I hope you realize this. Please do not try to talk to me or even uh -huh. say hello. I have nothing to say to you, as there is not even a word for how shitty what you did to me is. I was going to quit my band, but realize how stupid it would be to do it because of you. That's right, don't quit the band, man. don't give it up. Heather is not always right. <laughs> Fuck you for putting me in that position. You should have been straight with me from the beginning instead of giving me some bullshit about not wanting anyone to get upset. Are you mental? It's time for Kenzo Moments. This, Kenzo, this week's Kenzo Moment is being brought to you by oh. Kane's Market, where you can get the best damn dollar hoagie in Kensington. And we all did. Tia Borelli says, Jungle Juice Parties. I love Jungle Juice. Kelly Lally Hagendorn said, What was the old recipe of grain, alcohol, and cherry high C? Jungle Juice brings back so many memories of good times and bad hangovers. Memories? You I don't even it, care. You don't remember. remember shit. She just asked what the recipe was and said it. Yeah. That's like, oh, what's in a uh, gin and tonic? Southern Comfort and Coke. <laughs> Can I have a vodka and orange juice? What's in that? Judy Otto Evans wrote, Heather, how about hanging out on the church steps at Kip and Cambria and hiding the cigs in the wall until the next day? Or a mischief night in Kensington, soaping up the cars, egging houses of people we didn't like, or at Christmas time when we would go door to door singing Christmas carols. When our parents would put the speakers outside and play Christmas carols, New Year's Eve banging pots and pans. Yeah. KC. And that utter O'Connell wrote, How about Hojo? That's a name from the past. I remember Hojo that I haven't seen anyone mention. He was a few years younger than me. But I remember he had every young girl wrapped around his little pecker. LOL. On a serious note, one of my fondest memories was in the summer walking with my friends to Junietta Creek with a packed lunch and swimming in that filthy water. It was called a Red Rock. We used to call it Red Rock. One time I got caught by my mom and she beat me with a high heel. <laughs> yeah, we all got beat with high heels. I never got beat with a high heel. No, well, lucky you. But I always did go to Junietta Creek. So we all did. You know. That, that was, was like going, a world away. Like going down the shore for Yeah, it was. Tony's. It was like a whole trip. Yeah. You had a plan ahead, you know. Pack your lunch. Pack your lunch. We used to get chased off the golf course because we would sit on yeah. the fucking golf course and eat our lunch. And yeah. And we would chase us off the golf course. I know. We used to get chased off too. It was we, the politicians. We thought they were rich because <laughs> they were playing golf. and they like, were golfing. Yeah. I didn't even know what it was called. I was like, why are they hitting that ball around and chasing it? <laughs> sort of like a dog chasing its tail. <laughs> Sean Kenzo Pride Maloney said, How about going shopping at McCoury's Five and Dime store and Christmas time down on Kenston Ave? That was great memories. Or how about sneaking in drinks in bars from people you knew? My first drink was in the bar at Roar and Westmoreland. Roar and Westmoreland. It's still there. It used to be Kickstarts. I don't know what it was years ago. Robert Reed back in the day. Thomas Reed. Thomas Reed. <laughs> I got Robert on the brain. Thomas Reed said, back in the day when kids growing up in Kenston, we would go outside every day, night, and play. We made up games. We used our imagination. Today, kids stay in the house, play video games, texting their friends. I think they may have a fear of the sun. You're right. 
We had no texting, so we walked to our friends' houses, knocked on the door, and asked if they wanted to come out and play. We ran out the door as soon as we could when we came home from school, and technology, you know, he's saying, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I think it's a bad thing. I think it's a double-edged sword. People can come into your life any time of the day or night. It's intrusion. Yeah, yeah, but it's so convenient to text somebody. Yeah, well, it's and, not convenient uh, to fucking receive texts at 4 in the morning because somebody's drunk or something. Just yeah, shut your phone off. Well, really? I, don't, I don't do that. I need a Get rid of your cell phone then. I, I like technology. Alice McErlane Johnson said, My first drink in a bar was at 447D in Allegheny. Frank's was later. Laugh out loud. It was tough drinking right next to your mom's house. Sure. Hmm. I didn't drink next to my mom's house. I went around the corner. <laughs> Joan James. Samala, Samala. 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 My favorite Kenzo moment was waiting for the Ascension Carnival. They had rides and a dunk tank where sometimes the teachers would get in and we would play bingo and they had stands where we could get pizza, cotton, candy, etc. And I always remember winning a prize and I played the different games. I they still know. have those, Joan, carnivals I, I, I all know. over the city. I want to know, did they, the, whoever was in the dunk tank, when she was throwing the ball, were they saying, Blondie got her hair out of a bottle. <laughs> She wasn't that? blonde then. Well, she is now. Mm -hmm. She got out of a bottle. That's all I'm saying. That must be an inside joke because I have no idea what you're talking about. She dyes her fucking hair, right? As if nobody and knew that. And where the that. fuck does she get the dye? From a bottle. That's all. In Community Corner this week. Adult day services are non-residential facilities that provide a protective environment, personal care, and recreational activities to people who can't remain safely at home or whom are isolated at home alone. Adult day services are all often critical in allowing older adults to remain in home, at home. Caretakers are able to work at a job outside the home or simply take a break from the demands of caregiving, knowing that their loved one is in good hands. You should look into that. Adult day services typically include Personal care, assistance with walking, eating, toileting, and personal hygiene. Recreational activities include you know, recreational activities, counseling, medical support, blood pressure monitoring, blah, 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 and all that other shit. Arrangements must be made in advance for an individual to attend an adult day service facility. For specifics on eligibility services, provided costs and any other requirements, contact the individual facility or go to the PCACares.org or call... 215-765-9040. And they also provide transportation, too, which is key. That's key. That's key because a lot of people can't get around. So key. it is key. On July 11th, PCA began distributing a senior farmer's market nutrition program. It gives produce vouchers as a part of an annual program to encourage seniors to include fresh fruits and vegetables in their diet. Eligible seniors can receive a $20 voucher to use at certified farmers markets throughout the city. You can get the voucher at PCA's main office at 642 North Broad. North. North. Did I say that? You said North. North Broad. Sorry. North Broad. Between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on weekdays and at other designated sites. You can go and find it. There's too many. Um, you'll need to show proof of age, six year or older, and you have to be a city resident. The vouchers are made available through funds from the U.S. Department of Agriculture from the PA Department of Agriculture. Did I say that two times? Yeah. It's on a first-come, first-served basis. You have to get it before November 30th. Questions or eligibility and other sites, you can go to, no, you can call 215-765-9040. We would also like to send out a very special happy birthday to my little mini cupcake, Sierra. And my daughter, Sierra. I love you. Sweet 16. Growing up too fast. And also to our bitch friend, Julie. Julie Heim, Joseph, we love you. Peace out. Live, love, laugh. That's it? That's it. Happy birthday, Sierra. That's all you got to say to your daughter? That's, uh, we don't do this all the time. Any of the jackass. Love, 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 laugh. That's you. I said it. Your turn. Like that? Yeah. No, I said it before. You weren't paying attention. You're not. You're not. Dude. Didn't I?
forget the bad ones I hid. I ain't being humble, and it's hard to be kind when you're trapped in this true world with a love like yours and mine. Last day of summer. Last day of summer. Babe, it's the last day of summer. Make it last. Some rock and roll. Something inside me won't let me rest. Just stand tall with the very best. I wish you could be here for all the times I try. I don't think your daddy would understand why. Last day of summer. Last day of summer. Babe, it's the last day of summer, yeah. Make it last. A little clown. I know it's fine power, and I don't think it's fair. If I can't have you now, I lose you on the way there. I wish you could be here for all the times I try. I don't think your daddy would understand why. Last day of summer, yeah, it's the last day of summer. Internet shit. Scramble TV. 